omission. Lying somewhat, but we omit it. So I didn't say, oh, and she said, did you go to Sonic? And I said, no. <laughs> and she would say, that, that's a lie. It's so omission. For that, or what about when you know someone's going to do something wrong and you do nothing about it? You know someone's going to do something wrong and you do nothing about it. That's omission. So that's too long to write out, so I'm just going to go like this. So I'm <laughs> So, those are pretty bad news, huh? You know, it separates us, we're sinning, we're doing all these things, it's pretty gloomy news. The good thing is, that in that scripture, for the wages of sin is death. There's a line after it. There's a but. And this is the biggest but you'll encounter. <laughs> but gift, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. But the gift of God, the gift of God, we do all these things, we break our pots, we shatter them, we smash them, but we rarely are there to accept the gift that God has given. We're really there. A lot of times, it's a scenario like this. We have our pot, all right? Don't worry, I'm not going to break it. We have our pot and we have, this is a present, you know, gift. Everybody see that? Gift box, right? We're not going to break it. And we have us, and imagine this is God's gift to us. This is himself. This crazy thought that he would, that he would give us something. Well, he did. He gave us his only son. The diamond of cross. He gave us his only son, the diamond of cross. But the gift of God is eternal life. There are so many people that are lost, who are searching, who are hurting, who all these things are suffering. And this gift is always right there in front of them. You know, Father talked about how weird it is. It's Jesus' birthday. And yet, we give ourselves presents. Every day, Christ has a present for you. Every day, he gives himself. Every day, he's waiting. You ever walk the streets, you know, and you find a stray dog? I had this the other day. I was driving. No, I wasn't walking. So I was driving, and this dog kept on following my car. And I'm not like an animal hater. I like dogs the best out of any animal. So I didn't want to run it over, you know. And I got out of my car. I was like, get away. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to run it over, so I'm like kicking it. You know, I'm, I'm kicking it. Okay. So I kicked it. Okay. So I'm like, get away, get away, get away. And yet... I kicked it, and it came back. I thought about kicking it, okay? And I kicked it, and it came back. And a lot of times we treat Christ like that. We say, no, Lord, no. This sin, that's more important than you. But he's still right there with the present. And then we turn another way, and we say, no, no, no. This is more important now, God. But he's still right there. He's still right on your backside, like a dog. He's just right there, and he's waiting. And we say, no, no, Lord, this is more important. This is more important. And he watches us time and time again smash the pot. Time and time again smash the pot. And yet he's right there with the present. And many of us, I guarantee you, probably 80% of us in this room, will never open the gift. Will never be there. Will never say, Okay, Lord. I got nothing. I got nothing. But you have something. You have something. 
Our model for life is a guy who hung, a guy who hung half naked on a cross, beat and whipped for us. Our model in life is a guy who cured thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And at the end, there was three people left. And he was still giving himself. As they nailed him to the cross, stretch out his arms, if you ever seen the Passion, they broke his arm to stretch it out to fit the hole of the cross. And they nailed his hands in. And he said to the people nailing his hands, he said, Father, forgive them. <clears throat> they know not what they do. Still there with the gift. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And we choose the death all the time. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The gift of God is eternal life. Every Sunday, we offer confession. Not because Father likes to hang out in a smelly room. Because he realizes we enter into death and sin. Because he realizes that no matter what, the faults, everything, Christ is there waiting, just waiting for us. He gave us that sacrament of reconciliation. He gives it to us every day. And he's giving you that choice tonight, tomorrow, whenever you say yes. He's giving you that choice to turn back to him, to turn back to the Father. I couldn't bring my friend back. I tried for the longest time. You know, we do things and, and it, it's, it's good, you know? We remember people. You know, like Father said during All uh, Saints Day, you know, we, we as Catholics, we do it right. We, we like someone, then uh, we keep them as a saint and we chop off their bones and then display them. <laughs> Relics. I tried forever. <laughs> Bring back my friend. And every day, well, there hasn't really been a day that I haven't gone by that no regret. You know, not asking them to come over to my house or not leading them astray with the friends we have. I lived with that life. I lived it too long. And yet I was sitting right where you were every Sunday. Every Sunday. And a recent statistic came out. It said 80%. You guys sitting in this room, 80%. When you're a senior and you graduate, you know, you come to youth group. I don't care whether your parent makes you or you come on your own. You come here, 80% of you won't have a faith, faith within one year of being at high school. 